Hey all, Tom Moran here from Tom's Big Spiders. Today we're going to take a look at Heterotheli villicella or the Tanzanian chestnut, which apparently is a nomen dubium, which means name in doubt when you get nomen dubium. It means somewhere along the line somebody re-examines a species and says, wait a minute, we're not sure this is the right species or it was described correctly. In this case, a paper came out in March of 2020 in which they found that 181 species that had been identified at that time, the samples of them were basically obliterated when the museum they resided in was destroyed during World War II. So because they have not been yet re-examined and the original materials are not available, they have decided that all 181 of these species names are in doubt. So I'm not going to get really big into that. It was kind of a surprise to me when I was doing my research before putting this video together, but the paper is really good. So what I'll try to do is link the paper down below for folks who are interested in checking it out. But for the sake of this video, we're going to continue to call it H. Villicella because that's all the spider is known by now, what has been sold under for quite some time in the hobby. Now, the H. Villicella is an old world fossorial species from Tanzania. They tend to be very, very small, considered to be true dwarfs because the females supposedly only get to be about two and a half tops three inches or so, but most of them around two and a half inches. Males are around an inch and a half, an inch and three quarters. So that's a very small spider. And temperament wise, they are very shy and very heavy webbers. They'll do some burrowing, but they'll also come up top and create a huge mass of webbing with different entrances and entrances. It's really cool to watch. And as a fun fact, this is one of the species folks have had a lot of luck keeping communally. I'm not going to attempt to keep this one communally. My communal days are probably done for the time being, but if you do want to look for information, there's information out there on that. So enough of just me talking. Let's take a look at H. villicella or the Tanzanian chestnut. All right, so this one's been a long time coming. We're about to rehouse a Heterotheli villicella or Tanzanian chestnut. This particular one here I picked up is a pretty well-started sling. Last summer, I think it was around June or so, from Caleb Hill, who runs the basically the inverts from Jabberwock Reptiles up in Massachusetts. I had a good time visiting with Caleb that day. Picked this one up and has been on my list for quite a while because this will be my third attempt to raise one up so I can do a husbandry video. On um, The first one I got was back in 2013, and that I'll throw up some pictures here. In that instance, the spider seemed to be doing great, suddenly started acting weird. She was very secretive before that. She was hanging out in the open. She was dragging her butt around. I noticed there was some poo caked up around her spinnerets. She eventually died. I believe it was an impaction. That was the first time I had ever encountered that with one of my spiders. And looking back on it, when I had been doing my husbandry research for them, a lot of folks said that they were a species that needed it bone dry. So she was probably underhydrated and that was probably on me. So the second one I got was back in 2015. It ended up being a mature male. It was a tiny little guy, about an inch, maybe an inch and a half, an inch and three quarters, one of the smallest mature males I had ever seen. And it should be noted that this is considered to be one of the true dwarf species because females supposedly only get to be about two and a half inches, three inches tops. Most, most of the things I've read about two and a half inches to two and three quarters inches or so. So a very, very small spider. So this one here, we're going to be rehousing into one of these over here. I'll actually move it over so we can talk about it ahead of time. It's one of the barbarous growth enclosures that I love. This one here is, I believe, seven inches by about 11 and a half inches by about nine inches tall once you put the top on. This is gonna give her quite a bit of room because what I would like to see is some webbing. This is a heavily webbing species. They will kind of like uh, an insi, they will do a lot of webbing with different tunnels going into it. So I'd really like to see some of that behavior. So what we have inside is BioDude substrate. The last of my BioDude substrate, I've been using my own mix, but it's still kind of damp and I did want to start this off rather dry. And then we've got a couple pieces of cork bark hides, a starter burrow under here, a piece of sandblasted driftwood, and some little plants here for anchor points, obviously some leaf litter, and she will be getting a water dish after the fact. This is a species that I do want to make clear, you do want to keep them more on the drier side. However, like any spider out there, they do need access to water, so a water dish would be prudent. And then sometimes what you can do is sprinkle some water on their webbing and they'll come out and drink from that. So back when I got mine in 2013, the first one I kept it, it was about probably a half inch when I got maybe even smaller. They're very, very teeny tiniest slings. I kept her in one of the 
AMAC box enclosures, like two and a half by two and a half by four inches tall. The second one, same thing, kept it in the AMOX, uh, AMAC box, and it actually grew up and molted out and mature in that. That's how tiny it was. This one here is in a dram vial. So I would say with slings, if you have one of the teeny tiny slings, you're going to want to go for the much smaller dram vials. And then if you have a larger sling, a larger dram vial, a five ounce deli cup would work fine. As far as juveniles are concerned, this is one that they put on decent size. They grow rather quickly. So you may end up putting, I don't know, an inch and a half one into its adult enclosure. You could put a into something that's around a quart or a deli cup. They don't get very big. So keep in mind when you're moving them into their juvenile enclosures, you're going to be looking for something probably a bit smaller than you'd normally use for juveniles. So what we are going to do here is we're going to try to get her out so we can see her a bit because I have almost no footage. I think I have a little hunting footage of her. And what we're going to do is just drag this out. There she is. Oh, this enclosure is going to be quite big for her. Let's see if I can get her to come out into the stuff so Billy can get a shot of her. So right now, she's about two inches or so. Here she, she's going to come out. And we have the paper towels that I, as I catch my sleeve on this, the paper towels are in the corner. So that if she does bolt, a lot of times what will happen is if the spider bolts, they'll run around the outside of the, the containment enclosure. And then what they'll do is they get under a piece of paper towel, they feel safe, and they'll pause there, and then you can catch them. So what we're going to do is just give her a slight little poke. And if Billy wants to get some shots... So a lot of folks report that these are excellent beginner old world species because they're shy. They'll do a lot. If you give them the space, they'll do some webbing. They're going to stay out of sight, out of mind. You'll see them when they come out and hunt. They'll come right out, bursting out of the webbing, grab the prey items, and then disappear in it. This is also one of the species that some folks have had a lot of success keeping communally. They supposedly do well, but it's like any other communal species, obviously. There is always the danger of cannibalism. And by the sounds of things with these guys, what happens is if you put a bunch of them together, there may be a couple eaten, but then they basically level off and start living together peacefully. I have not tried it with this one. I'm kind of steering away from communals from now on because it seems like a lot of them, there is that risk of something going wrong. So what we're going to do now is get her into the enclosure, which she is looking super tiny for. I don't know if this one's going to work. All right. So now that I'm looking at her and realizing how tiny she is, and I'm looking over at this other enclosure here. I usually only use this as she gets ready to boogie there. I usually only use this for spiders that are at least two inches or so. I thought she was more in the two inch range. I'm a little concerned that she might be not only swimming in this, and that's not the biggest concern. The biggest concern is there are little with these enclosures, little gaps. That if the spider is big enough, doesn't pose any risk of flight or any risk of them escaping. But I'm a little concerned with the size of her, if she can get her carapace through any of these spots that she could be out and about. So what we may do, and this sometimes happens, hasn't happened in a while, let me pause here and see what else I have that might be a little smaller, a little more appropriate for her as she goes and hides. And what we'll probably end up doing is dropping her right in and her webbing there. I'm going to drop something over top of that in a minute, catch cup, so that she's contained. But we will come back when I have another enclosure that is probably a little bit more suitable for her. So for you guys, it'll just be a split second. For us, it might be a few minutes as we try to figure out what else to put her in. So we'll pause it here for a second. We'll be back and then we'll finish the rehousing. All right, so we're about to rehouse my H. Villacella. Actually, just kidding. This is obviously, we just spent some time getting another enclosure together. And I think I, there was a moment there where we're about to completely abort doing the whole video because it was just getting to be kind of a pain in the butt. But I think it's important to show that sometimes you got to be able to adjust. This hasn't happened in quite a while with one of our rehousings where you get the spider out and it's not quite as big as it looks. Or sometimes the spider's much bigger than you expect. And you got to kind of be flexible and be able to adjust. And in this case, what we did was I've been moving away from the 8 by 8 by 8 XO Terra Nano Cubes. But honestly, this will be a great, seeing the size of the spider now, this will be a great one to put it into because A, it's not too big. It doesn't offer the room for escape that I thought the other one might have some cracks and crevices that could let the spider get out. And I think the size wise, it'll fit in it when it's a, a you know, right now where it's about probably about an inch and three quarters or so. And after it puts on a little size, becomes an adult, she'll still be able to be in here. It leaves some room up top for the webbing. What I've done, obviously, is adjust what I had inside. So still, we have the BioDude substrate. 
We've got it kind of angled in the back. So if she wants to do a bit of burrowing, these guys will do a bit of burrowing and then they'll web a bunch up tops. So we want to give her that option. Then we have the sandblasted, I think it was sandblasted driftwood, I want to say. It's a little heavier than normal driftwood. Some plants on it for, you know, fake foliage for webbing. And then we have a couple pieces of cork bark. Because what I want her to do is have an option of where to go. She can go under here. There's a little crook underneath here that she can go into. I got a funny feeling this is where she's going to end up somewhere in there. And they'll be able to start burrowing and webbing outward. So this, I feel much more comfortable. I'm mean, honestly a huge fan of the butt having to switch mid video to do this, but I feel much more comfortable with the appropriateness of this enclosure as opposed to what we're going to put her into because I would not have slept well at night thinking there's a chance that she might be able to get out of it. So what we're going to do now is probably try to pick up this hole. Again, one of the things I've been doing with webbing, with the species that web, is taking some of the old webbing and putting it into the new enclosure. And I have seen signs that that helps them settle in a little bit more. I just rehoused, what was it? a harpactera species and I put in a little bit of webbing with her and she immediately sat right on the webbing and that's where she started creating her new environment from where she did a little burrowing next to it did some webbing from that spot so it seemed to help her settle in and I've spoken to other folks that have seen the same thing so it, it's one of those deals is there hardcore evidence that it works uh, I would say no at this point but we have a lot of anecdotal evidence that that will help the spider sell it, settle in more quickly so what we're going to do she is right there Billy wants to try to get just one more shot of her. we're having a hard time seeing if they're coming out okay oh yeah there she is gorgeous little spiders cute little things. Again, I think that's one of the things that attracts folks. I know when I first got my first sling, it was because I was reading that they were very good for a beginner old world species. So it was very, they're smaller, they're timid. That makes for a good beginner old world species. They're not going to be coming at you with the threat postures and the supposed, you know, well, not supposed kind of nasty venom. So what we're going to do now is get her in here. And not in an ideal spot for that, but um, where did I put this? Really wants to get another shot of her while she sits right on time. I might just leave that there for the time being, but eh. Now, a word, I know I talked a little bit about moisture. The big thing with these guys, and I found with just about every spider, nobody wanted, can be kept completely 100% bone dry, especially the slings. And I think the problem was when I had my first one of these, I kept it completely dry from like sling hood on, and that could cause some complications. So that might have led to the impaction. The as a sling, what I do now when I had her now is what I would do is dribble some water down the side and let her come out and drink if she wanted to. I did keep one corner of the substrate moist at all time. Now that she's in this, what she'll have is a water dish. And as I said before, I'll sprinkle water on the webbing. Temperatures, these guys do great in any temperature. When I first got mine, it was obviously when I Many years ago, when we were in the old tarantula room and the temperatures in that room often hit the mid to high 60s in the wintertime, the other one did fine with that. The second one did fine with that, matured out in those temperatures. Nowadays, the temperatures in here, wintertime, anywhere from 71 to 74 degrees, sometimes dips a little lower on those super cold days. And then the summertime, we're looking at high 70s to mid 80s or so. Eating, they eat great. When they're little teeny tiny slings, you're probably going to want to let them scavenge feed. That's what I did with mine. Or I had B, do, uh, B lateralis nymphs were really good for them. Sometimes I'd pre-kill one, drop in the nymph, and they'd go right at it. As they put on a little bit of size, small crickets, small mealworms, small roaches will do just fine. And then this one now is taking down medium B lateralis or medium crickets with no problem at all. Temperament wise, as we mentioned, very shy. Again, it's one of those species, and I found this with most old world species. If you give them room to do their thing, if you give them room to web and to create their own homes, they generally speaking are more laid back. They'd rather bolt and hide than stand their ground. The species that are being very defensive, a lot of times it's a situation where they're caught out in the open suddenly and they feel trapped and exposed or they're not set up properly. So I'm guessing with this girl, I again will catch her out at feeding time. Sometimes I have caught my, all three of them will come out and kind of sit in the mouth of their webbing waiting for prey, which is really cool because you can catch some footage of them then. Obviously, we took her right from her sling enclosure. We're putting her into what will probably be her adult enclosure. And in my notes, I was going to say that the barbarous growth one that I was putting her in might be a little bit big that I actually have in the notes that an eight by eight by eight 
Exoterra Nano would probably be perfect for an adult. So that's what she's in now. And I think this will be a good one for as she puts on size. Unfortunately, she just ran away and disappeared. But that's good because I can get this webbing kind of, oh, she's underneath the webbing. Let me see if I can just move the webbing down to a better spot. Maybe this back corner. And you know, here we go. Perfect. There, there she's open there. So H. Villicella, awesome little spiders. I, this is one of those ones we talk about sometimes you have a spider that's one and done. I've been trying to get a female for these, for of these guys for over 10 years. Glad this one looks like a female. She's much bigger than the male I had. I've not sexed her out officially, but it's looking like a female to me and very glad to have one. I will obviously do updates as time goes on. What I'm hoping to see is not only a lot of webbing, but a lot of different little tunnels. They make like this little Swiss cheese tunnel system in their webbing, which is really cool. So H. Villicella, Tanzanian chestnut. Glad we could finally feature this one. And glad we could finally show what happens when you go to do a rehousing and sometimes you miscalculate and have the wrong size enclosure. So again, I'm kind of glad we were able to show this. This hasn't happened in a long time because usually I have a pretty good idea how big the spider is. But in this case, I haven't caught the spider out and about all that much. I thought it was a little bit larger. And I do think that that cage, although I think it probably would have worked for it, I didn't want a chance that spider getting out in the middle of the night or something, exploring, squeezing out of one of those gaps and losing the spider. So this one I think will work just fine. And again, it was one of the ones I was going to list when I went through my notes about what you could put an adult into. So I think it's going to be a great enclosure for it. And I'll definitely update folks when it starts webbing. But uh, again, sometimes the best laid plans, you get these guys out, you realize they're too big, too small, and you got to be ready to adjust. The trick is to, when in doubt, make the change. If it looks like the enclosure is going to be too stuffy, then pause, go and see if you can find something larger. Or in this case, if it looks like the enclosure is going to be too small, pause, try to find something more appropriately sized. So that will do it for this one. I just want to thank all the folks who chimed in last week with their favorite horror movies. That was a lot of fun for me. I'm a huge horror movie fan. And what blew my mind is how many folks put movies that are on my top 10, top 20 list, top three list. It was amazing. Some folks asked me why don't I don't do my top three because I couldn't. I tried before I published the video and I ended up with 25 movies listed in no semblance of an order they should be in. I, like many of you, would have a very hard time narrowing it down. So I'm sorry for making you do that. And for the folks who don't watch horror movies, I apologize for that. I'm glad you chimed in anyway. It was kind of cool to just see who follows all these videos all the way to the end because I know sometimes you get into them and it's like, all right, I don't need to hear this or this is information I need and we turn it off. So it was great to know that some people do listen to these all the way through or watch them all the way through. So that will do it for this one. As always, I'd like enough to subscribe. Very much appreciate. Click the little circle up in there. Put some more videos up in here. If you take the time to comment, I'll take the time to respond. Just know it can take me a little while. That'll do it for this one, guys. As always, stay safe. Catch you all next time.